Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back through Daily Crypto News and Analysis. And today we are going to be talking about the entire crypto market. So sit back, relax, and before we fully jump on into this video, I do just want to ask guys to please leave a like on this video. It does help the channel grow immensely. It takes a couple seconds and I do greatly appreciate that. Now we are seeing Bitcoin taking a little bit of a leap of faith. Now I want to just quickly address a few factors. So obviously, yes, we are breaking down below that 382 Fibonacci level. I have been having my focus point on around 36K for a little bit of time. Now within this, I have been addressing and I have been talking to you guys about a lot of other things that factor into this entire market as well. I am watching Bitcoin closely because, you know, we are at this point in time where if we do have a major break below these levels, we will see a lot lower. I mean, if we do break down below 36K, it's going to get very, very rough. Now, I will say this. I have been watching a lot of other analysts talk about what is going to possibly happen. I see, you know, a lot of the side from the bullish you know, perspective and also the bearish perspective. Now, on the micro viewpoints, we actually see here, you know, very important post, the floor Bitcoin price of the accumulation phases was within 0 to 29 days of the last three crosses. We had a cross nine days ago. Will history repeat? The last three times resulted in a Bitcoin price drop to my confluence floor model, currently at 26.8K. Now, we do see here, I'm not convinced we go to 27K, but if history repeats for a fourth straight time, that could be the low of this accumulation phase. And this is that level that, you know, a lot of individuals have been talking to you guys about. I don't know if you know if you guys watch a few other analysts or not, but I've been hearing about 20K being called for a very, very long time. If we hit 26.8K, that will be a very rough crash. I mean, we're talking about a major crash throughout the entire crypto market, including major alts taking a huge drop in price. But, you know, if we're going to, we'll just say 27K to make it, you know, very uh, just easy to really kind of talk about in terms of percentages and stuff like that. Uh, this would be a 28.65% of a drop in price. Now, if we have this major correction down to those points, this breaks all those lows from the summer and we actually range on to this level. Let me get rid of this percentage so that you guys can really kind of see this. This ranges us back to the resistance level going as far back as December of 2020. I don't believe that this is a level that we will hit. I don't believe that this is a target point for us. I believe if anything, we will see a 20% correction if we do break those levels, which will bring us to about $30,000 being tested or even going as low as the summer lows being tested once again. But I am eyeing 36K as being our major point uh, to really kind of bounce off of. If we don't see a strong bounce from there, it is going to get rough. But this will play into that point of the triple bottom tap that I've been talking to you guys about for over a week. Here's our first bottom tap at about $33,000, followed by the second one at about 34K. And 36K would be our main point to really kind of address and watch for being targeted. Now, all while this is happening, okay, I am watching a lot of the leading factors that will lead us to having a major drop tomorrow because right now things are looking fairly rough. I mean, this candle here, uh, if you go to like the one hour, you guys could see this major candle that just got printed on the chart. It looks pretty rough, right? In fact, even on the four hour, you could really kind of see it. Uh, and this would scare a lot of individuals if you you know, didn't know exactly what was happening or the levels that we are printing on the chart. Um, but while things are moving like this, this is not that bad of a dropping point at all. I mean, especially if you compare it to March 2nd all the way down to March 7th. But I believe that tomorrow will be the leading factor because that is where we do see a lot of things really kind of changing. I am watching the dollar closely because we are at these major high levels. I mean, we're going all the way back to levels that we haven't seen since May of 2020. These are also very concerning factors because this is where, you know, we will see a lot more money uh, pouring out of risk asset levels and flowing into a dollar, right? In, or I should say into the dollar, not, you know, into a dollar. But... Again, when we're talking about the US dollar gaining momentum, uh, we are also watching 
key factors like the indices. These will, of course, reopen tomorrow. Uh, I'm watching these closely. I mean, I'm not going to be the one to tell you that, you know, these are extremely inflated in price, specifically the Dow Jones. We know the Dow Jones is extremely inflated in its value. We know that the Dow Jones's real value is not anywhere near these levels. Um, but of course, I've talked to you guys and I've addressed uh, the major levels that I do want this to be at, which is, of course, the 40 to 45K level. I think that that is where we will see a major rejection point on the Dow Jones. Um, of course, things are looking fairly rough right now. Um, if we are talking about stocks, this does not look good. Um, but are we expecting a major crashing event here? You know, it's hard to say. I mean, we have to watch this, you know, at its opening point. But I will say this. I am expecting a mass stock market crash. We're talking about a 70 plus percent correction across the board. Okay, these are massively inflated. We know that inflation rates are extremely high. RSI here was extremely rough. Volume was extremely rough, but I believe that we will prop these markets up economically still to make it look like we are still very strong. We're seeing inflation being thrown out the window, calling it transitory and things like that. All while we know that a major crashing event is going to happen that is going to be worse than the Great Depression. And when we are talking about that, you know, we talk about a 70% correction. We've addressed this. You know, a 70% correction along the board will bring us around this, you know, $10,000 level. You know, you look back on in time and, you know, even going back to 20 uh, or 2008 and 2007, I mean, look at this percentage correction and it, it's going to be worse than this time here because, you know, economically things look a lot worse. So could we have, you know, a, a, a higher percentage drop? Yes. A 70% correction would be, you know, in my opinion, something to really kind of watch for. But this was a 54% drop and it did not recover for years and years later. We're talking about like 2012. And also individuals are still very hurt from this economical standpoint back in 20, uh, 2007 and 2008. And now we're in 2022 and we're at this massively inflated level. We know economically, you know, the economy is fairly rough right now. I mean, I don't need to tell you guys that. I mean, who, you know, filled up their gas tank recently, right? Uh, who went shopping at a grocery store recently? Inflation is absolutely here. You could see it in terms of the everyday prices that we are paying. A lot of people kind of disregard it. People don't like to, you know, focus on it. But, you know, economically, things are looking pretty rough. Of course, my eyes are on other positive things like, for example, the 10-year yield increasing in momentum and strength, uh, which tells us there is a lot more interest in risk assets and risk, you know, uh, investments as well, which would lead us back to crypto. But I'm still looking at the micro views here. The micro views is, of course, Bitcoin leading us to uh, 36K, the dollar gaining strong momentum while the indices look very rough. And when we are talking about the Dow Jones, we know that this is in a massively, this is in an extremely inflated level. But we will prop this up. I think economically, we will make sure that these look very good from, you know, a standpoint on, hey, the U.S. economy is booming. It, it looks great until, of course, we do not look good. They cannot, you know, they cannot overprint to the point where they are propelling the Dow Jones up to this level where it looks strong. Um, but we did recently hit a high of about 37,000 almost for the Dow Jones. This will most likely co continue, but on the micro view on this, this week specifically, I'm watching a lot of things unfold within crypto. I'm watching a lot of things happening with Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin looks like we will most likely target that 36K level, possibly even going down as far as 33K if we do break uh, many structures. But this is what I'm watching. This is the major key that I have been addressing for a long time is watch for these major bands. This is that proof of work ban. Uh, this is going to be, you know, happening tomorrow. This is going to be a, a major meeting about this. They're going to be talking about everything within Bitcoin and of course, just proof of work in general and how, you know, when you're looking at the environment, sustainability and stuff like that, it, it's a very rough topic to talk about. And I, I do believe that this is something that will lead us to a major impulse throughout the entire market. But also this combined with the indices, with the dollar, all of this plays a huge role in major, you know, impulses. We'll most likely see an impulse on Bitcoin. 
and that structure will most likely break us down to about 36 to 35k and if we do go lower you know i would just say and i would say right now prepare for some major targets being targeted which would be down in the 20k area now of course you know, here's that major support zone going back to January 22nd, the 23rd, uh, where we did target 35K almost exact. So anywhere between this level here is my demand zone. Uh, if we do break below this, then, hey, I will be looking for some very cheap buys on a lot of altcoins, um, but I'm not going to be targeting any sort of buys at this current moment. Things, you know, all coins are not taking too bad of a hit right now. XRP still looking pretty good at around 76 cents. XLM still around 17 cents, still in this nice tight, tight area. Uh, this is that tightening bond that we have been in for a very long time. Uh, major support at around like the 16 cent zone. XRP major support around that 69 cent zone. Uh, H bar. One of the ones that I have been, you know, talking to you guys in this major demand zone down here at around uh, 18, almost 19 cents to around 16 cents. I believe that these levels will be targeted and breached if we do have that major drop on Bitcoin. So definitely look at that. And last but not least, the one that a lot of people have been, you know, addressing and talking to me about Casper. So. You know, this is in sort of an, a, a very strong downward trend. Um, of course, a lot of these assets, when they do go into these major downward trends, they eventually start trading sideways and then have that major breakout event. Uh, this will most likely be a similar one. Do I believe that we will see a lot more downward trend here? Most likely. We will probably come down and test these lows at around five cents. If we do break this structure down here, this is where I do get a little bit concerned and this is where I do start to buy or put buy orders in at around like three to one cent. Uh, if that is the case, you know, I'm just saying right now, I'm going to be loading up on Casper greatly and I'm not going to wait for the bottom to, you know, like when we're, we're, we're talking about these levels being breached, right? I'm not going to sit here and wait for these bottoms to be breached before I start to put those orders in. No. And I'm not going to DCA down at all. I'm going to wait for a confirmed bullish breaking point where we do hit a bottom structure and have a strong impulse. Now, that strong impulse will bring us to the idea on watching volume as well as watching the RSI. Right now, the RSI is at oversold levels. In fact, the oversold levels would be at around you know 24 roughly where we did hit back in January. And the structure looks fairly bad. Uh, RSI looks extremely oversold and the volume is very rough. So similar to a lot of our altcoin holdings, we want a lot more volume. Uh, RSI on a lot of these other ones are, is pretty strong. Like it's not at, you know, Casper levels. Um, I just think that the interest on Casper is falling right now. And we do need a lot more, you know, one volume. And two, I mean, the entire market is in a very rough patch right now, especially altcoins. Altcoins are currently, you know, in this sideways momentum, if they're in a sideways momentum or in, in Casper's case, in a downward trend due to, of course, Bitcoin's current levels. Bitcoin itself has not had strong price action lately, and we're just kind of trading sideways while, of course, Bitcoin dominance is still trading sideways itself um, but we have been seeing a lot of you know momentum in bitcoin dominance when we did hit about 44 percent and now we're still at around 43 percent and the problem here is the idea that we're still seeing you know sideways trading on the rsi um you know don't really pay attention to the volume on the the bitcoin dominance scale but we're still seeing you know sideways trading on the rsi while we're still seeing a strong impulse on the upward trend and the issue here is that now when we do see a Bitcoin drop, a lot of these altcoins, specifically like Casper, that don't have a lot of volume in will take a major hit. So with that being said, you know, where is the official bottom on Casper? Well, I'm watching five cents. If five cents gets retested, um, I'm watching for that to have a strong impulse. If we don't have a strong impulse, I'm putting buys at around three to one cent. Uh, and, and it could even be like four to three cents if you want to have, you know, a secure buy in point. But, you know, three to one cents is my main point. Um, H bar. I'm watching, you know, 16 to 19 cents. Um, XLM. Similar one. Uh, I'm watching the demand zones being tested here at around like, you know, 16 cents to roughly the bottom point of the support here at around like 13 cents if we do get those lows being printed in uh xrp watching the bottoms being tested going back as far as you know 
it was the January lows at around roughly 55 cents to around you know, even 63 cents if we do break down below 69 cents. But we are watching Bitcoin closely because a lot of factors are telling us, you know, economically, we're seeing a lot of strength in the dollar, which means that people are kind of pushing money into the dollar and moving away from risk assets. But, you know, the 10-year yield is telling me that there's going to be a lot of interest on risk assets anyways uh, from an investment standpoint. Uh, so I'm watching tomorrow specifically for the indices and the dollar. And I, I will tell you all right now, watch the impulse on Bitcoin because of the POW ban, which in my opinion is an orchestrated attack. Like I, I think that we're seeing a, a major you know, concern around Bitcoin, but this is like the best way to look at it, right? Like there's an organized effort to, you know, not destroy Bitcoin, but to really kind of attack crypto. And we've seen this, in the past, even with like XRP as well. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on. If you guys want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.